Okay, let me unmute myself. Here we go. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We will be presenting Bridging Waterfall to Agile presented by Nancy Wright. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. This session is being recorded. We will post a link to the recording and slide deck on the webinar page of our website as soon as it's available. To ensure a high quality recording, all attendees are encouraged to mute your mic. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your Zoom control panel. I'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have time for questions at the end. Our presenter, Nancy Wright, focuses on agile-based project program, portfolio and strategic management and related organizational change adoption techniques. Her agile knowledge and skills have been honed through a variety of business experiences in both the private and public sectors. She delivers a positive and successful client outcome throughout the greater Sacramento area. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to our presenter. Nancy, take it away. Thank you, Marissa. Hi, I am Nancy Wright. And as Marissa mentioned, I have a lot of experience and certifications in the niche area of Agile project management. So my intent today, this is just a short webinar, is to introduce you to the topic of Bridging Waterfall and Agile. Um, there should be time for some questions at the end, but also if you have just some type of quick clarifying question you'd like to ask during the presentation, please feel free to do that. Um, if you use the chat, Marissa will be monitoring that for me. If you want to come off mute and just call out my name, that works also. Uh, but it, best to bring it to our attention that you have a question because I won't be able to see any hands, you know, waving in the air, things like that. Uh, but again, we will have time for questions at the end. And this is just an introductory topic. Uh, there is a four hour class in May on this topic, the expanded version, of course. And so today is just to give you the highlights of what some of that information would cover. So again, I'm talking today about Bridging Waterfall and Agile. This is intended to be a course that helps people who may be um, very experienced in the traditional project management to start to learn how to bridge the concepts that you've learned in traditional waterfall project management, maybe PMBOK based, and learn how the um, concepts of Agile can apply. So the intent today is to do some comparisons, um, help you understand what's the same and what's different. So no need to respond to this, but I just wanted you to think um, about where you are in your Agile journey. Are you just aware of what the words mean? Um, do you actually have a pretty clear understanding of the definitions of Agile and Scrum? Um, are you already aware of the basics of what the Agile Scrum practices would be? Um, are you practicing Agile and Scrum, possibly in the work environment that you're in? Um, or are you one of the ones who are leading the change? Are you actually involved in some kind of an agile transformation, we like to call it, uh, within an organization? So this is um, intended to help anybody at any of these levels. I just wanted you to sort of think about where you are in your journey as I'm going through this information today. So talking about bridging waterfall and agile, um, I'm gonna cover, this is the outline for today. I'm gonna cover a few basic industry approaches and talk about the mindset shift that is involved in uh, being willing to sort of adapt and adopt Agile and its approaches and its practices, and then how the product is delivered. It's very different between Waterfall and Agile, so I want to touch on that. And the roles in the team organization, there are some very specific roles that are defined within an Agile Scrum world, so I want to speak to those. Project artifacts and reporting, how we track progress on a project and report on it has a different angle when you're in the agile project management space. And then just some tips on organizational change, what's really necessary to give agile a fair chance to be successful in your organization if you're willing to begin to adopt it. So there are some things that are the same. We still have project management concepts and everything in Agile, but then there are many things that are different, the approach or the style of how we do them. So that's what I'm here to talk about today. So industry approaches first. Um, if you are 
well versed in traditional project management, then you have already been introduced somewhere along your career to the PMBOT guide, the project management body of knowledge that's put out by PMI, Project Management Institute, which is the global project management organization. And they're currently on their seventh edition, but I believe it was the sixth edition, the one just prior to the one that's current, where they actually put together an agile practice guide. So it was a standalone document at that time, and now they have incorporated agile information within the PMBOK itself. So it's very exciting to me as someone who started out being a traditional project manager. I came up through the ranks of project management and program and portfolio management doing waterfall approaches. Um, to see that the major organization for project management has now embraced the fact that there are alternate ways to run projects. Um, and, you know, depending on the project, you might make a decision as to which approach to use, but it's great to know that they've started to incorporate additional information to augment what they talk about for the traditional approach. And then in the pure Scrum world, um, Agile and Scrum, there is an organization called Scrum.org, and two gentlemen, Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland, have written something called the Scrum Guide. They updated about every two to three years. The last update was in November, 2020. And I think they've gotten it down now to under 15 pages, but it is a very straightforward um, instructional guide on what the terms mean, what the practices are and some of the basics, but it doesn't really tell you how to implement anything. It just gives you, um, it's like a primer on doing it, but well worth the read. If you're interested in learning more about the Scrum Guide, then scrum.org is the source for that. They have also written um, a document called Scrum at Scale. So you'll once you get into Agile and Scrum, you'll start to learn that sort of one project team, if you have a Scrum team, is fairly straightforward, even a couple of teams. But if you want to do something that scales across your organization, you need, you need to go to a little bit more complex structure. And so they've written something called the Scrum at Scale Guide. Um, still very straightforward, but it tells you how to organize multiple teams. And then there's an entirely different organization called Scaled Agile, who has put together a really complex, in my mind, very complex multi-level framework called the Scaled Agile Framework. And they talk about, um, I know this picture is very small, but at the bottom layers are the team level and they have a, an entire program for how you can then integrate it into your organization to all the way to the top to your strategic business plan and the vision and the you know, strategic information for your organization. So there are multiple levels of how to apply an agile approach. So I just wanted to introduce a couple of them. All right, so I talked about a mindset shift. Um, if you've worked in the traditional project management world, you've probably heard the term waterfall, and it's the concept that you um, have a very linear approach. Um, I'll show a slide here in a minute, but you start with some early um, design or requirements gathering, and then you hand it off to developers, and you hand it off to testers, and you sort of do this waterfall approach through a project schedule that gets you to an implementation. Agile is more of a trickle effect. So instead of a, a kind of a big bang, sometimes the term that's used to for the agile or for the um, traditional approach, agile will focus on delivering things incrementally. So we do small pieces of product and we put them in front of our customers. So it's said to be more of a trickle effect for how you get to the end result of what the product should look like. So I want to introduce the concept of a mindset shift. You know, how would you get yourself away from thinking about how we've done projects traditionally and how to think in a more agile approach and agile mindset. So this is one where you will need to come off of mute um, when you look at this, or you can do it in the chat too, but what do you see? And there's no wrong answers. So what do you see when you look at this picture? Okay, two people looking at each other at first. <laughs> okay, great. There's a man playing a guitar looking at a woman across from him. Great. Woman in the doorway. Woman in the doorway, yes. Okay, I see somebody in the chat has the chalice or the goblet. Sometimes people call it the goblet going down the middle. So you guys have hit on all of the main aspects of this picture. And again, there's no right or wrong answer, but oftentimes people will see the um, profiles of the senior aged couple uh, looking at each other across the, the picture. Sometimes people see the golden goblet going down the middle. 
Others, as mentioned, see the um, smaller characters, the person with looks like pottery on their head and then a guitar player and a woman in a doorway behind them. So the point of me showing this is you're all looking at the exact same photo, yet you instantly gravitated toward something that um, was what you saw first. And again, not right or wrong, but when I do this, um, in a class, in a full, you know, multi-hour class, we spend more time talking about that mindset shift and how important it is that if you're used to seeing things one way, translate that to traditional project management, and I'm asking you to look at things a different way, translate that to an agile approach, then you have to be willing to open your mind to learning different concepts, techniques, and practices. And so Agile itself, whether it's just one scrum team, one team within an organization, or whether it is multiple um, teams, like a larger transformation within the organization, there needs to be a mindset shift at all levels, from the team level up to the executives, executives down to the team level. So, and that's part of the organizational change, the importance of the organizational change for an agile adoption. And I've been using um, two words, agile and scrum, somewhat interchangeably at this point, but agile, I want to make it clear, agile is an umbrella term, and there are multiple ways to apply agile to a project. Scrum is a very specific framework. I'll show you a picture of it in a bit, but scrum is a very specific framework and the most popular way for an organization to adopt an agile approach. So they are not um, the same thing, but they are often used interchangeably. So I like to explain the difference. All right, so now you have opened your minds with me today to thinking about things differently. So let me talk about how product delivery is the same and different. So in our traditional world, we spend um, a lot of time up front where we plan the scope um, there's, um, again, I'm speaking from experience, decades of being a traditional project manager. We spend a lot of time up front in a project planning and doing our research and design, um, moving into then handing off to the people who are going to build the product, test the product, and then eventually implement it. So we plan our scope. It's very controlled. We deliver things as kind of that big bang. And a Gantt chart is a very familiar tool for anybody who's worked in this field. So you plan out, and that's again where that waterfall approach, if you look at those green bars, the waterfall um, term has come from. So in Agile then, what we're doing is more flexibility and we're doing things again in trickles. And we use two words, iterative, meaning that we work and rework our product over time as we get customer feedback and incrementally, which means that we are building it in pieces and showing our customer those pieces over time. So it's a very different concept. And this um, teal colored diagram that you see in front of you is the agile cycle with a scrum cycle embedded in it. So agile then we spend still a lot of time up front with our planning, our vision, our roadmap and all of that, but we have a very different way of organizing the team and delivering the work. So to point that out again, just a little bit more clearly, the planning in our traditional method is um, done up front and heavily um, documented for all of the work that's gonna be done. We do comparable tasks and activities within our Agile framework, um, product vision, product roadmap, we can plan a release plan. And then we have something called a product backlog. And that is the document that is created to house the scope. So um, this again, doesn't get into a lot of detail today, but there are things called user stories and we write the work in um, user stories somewhat similar to use cases, if you're familiar with that term from our traditional space, but we do a lot of planning up front. Then when we get into the actual work itself, instead of taking that linear approach that you see in the traditional picture, we use the scrum cycle and we plan commonly um, in two week cycles, uh, they're called sprints, but commonly we plan in about two, maybe three week cycles, a plan and we just work on the work for those two to three weeks in that time box. And then we go to another sprint and we plan another two week period, for example. So we're, again, we're delivering incrementally. We're showing it to the customers. We end with something called a sprint review where we invite the customers in. And so we um, have a lot more, um, a higher emphasis on feedback loops. So 
the roles on the team then, uh, traditionally, you'd be very used to the sponsor, the project manager, business analyst, developer, tester, and there tends to be this um, top-down concept where the sponsor and the project manager might spend a lot of time together, sponsors being the one who are um, either funding or requesting the project, project managers then being the person who usually is the primary communicator with the team. And the team could be built of analysts, developers, testers, trainers, you know, we're used to all those roles. Within our agile or scrum team space, we have different roles. Product owner and scrum master are two very specific and unique roles. The product owner is the one we call the voice of the customer. And that person represents sponsors, um, all stakeholders, and they have a, their role involves a lot of communicating with the customers who are requesting the project or the product delivery. The scrum master then, the closest equivalent is to a project manager, but they're not identical roles. The scrum master then is responsible for coaching the team on the scrum processes and making sure that they help to clear any impediments or roadblocks. Um, they're coordinating with the product owner, making sure that the work is getting organized and documented. So together, the product owner and Scrum Master are um, a very tight pairing. They each have a very distinct role, but they need to work very closely together on behalf of the team and the organization. And then the, everybody else is just called a team member. There's no specific names. You still bring the same skill sets in, business analyst, developer, tester, trainer, you know, tech writer, anything that's involved in delivering the product. But within our agile scrum space, we just have a named product owner, a named scrum master, and everybody else is a team member. I make the distinction there too between core and extended. Core team members would be the people who are responsible every day, every sprint for helping to deliver the work. An extended team member might be somebody like a trainer or a tech writer who just comes in every couple of sprints and helps with some of the work. So they're not involved in every single sprint. They have um, some kind of a, a routine for joining the team periodically to do the work that they're representing. So it's a, a fine distinction, but I just like to point that out. All right, so when we get to the projects and the artifacts, uh, project artifacts and how we report on things, this is where uh, there are some very distinct differences. So on the waterfall side, again, with the Gantt chart, we have a project schedule. It's not uncommon to have um, traditional projects need to get into the um, status reporting, some kind of a colored dashboard, you know, the red, green, yellow type dashboard. What we do in Agile then is, I mentioned already, we have a product roadmap, we create a backlog, we work in sprints and create a sub backlog. But at the end, we have that sprint review with the customers and we measure our progress um, a little bit differently. We talk about how much work is remaining as, a, as opposed to how much work is um, still to go. So that's a very different concept and one that I spend a lot of times with the Scrum Masters on helping them to understand that. So just to recap, details are planned up front primarily in our um, traditional approach. And when we're in our agile scrum world, we plan incrementally a sprint. We do a lot of upfront planning, but we plan sprint by sprint. When we get to the um, how we report the work, we talk about what's been done versus what's remaining. And we have mostly a one-way communication through paper status reports or things like that. Whereas in our sprint world, we have a two-way communication. We invite the, the customers into our sprint review and we have communications about status in that meeting. So it's uh, different from that aspect also. So to recap then, uh, to, in order to have a successful agile adoption, there are certain categories um, when I'm coming in and teaching teams and teaching leaders and all of that is we want to have the um, leadership and management also be trained as agile champions. There's a lot of things that are impacted um, by their teams adopting an agile approach. So I spend time with leadership and management, helping them to be trained on the concepts. The environment needs to change also so that we're going less from predicting everything in directive control to a business agility concept and being able to adapt as we learn. There's a process every sprint called a sprint retrospective where teams will um, reflect back on what they did and what they'd like to improve for the sprint going forward as an example. So we spend a lot of time again with feedback loops um, already mentioned the product owner and Scrum Master, two very distinct new roles that Scrum brings to the organization. 
And then the team itself, we spend a lot of time teaching the team how to be um, cross-functionally represented, meaning all of the necessary people are on the Scrum team. If possible, in our, our real life world, have them co-located, sitting close together and highly allocated, meaning they're like full-time on the project. And then we spend a lot of time with team dynamics, teaching teams how to self-organize and benefit from their team agreements and things like that. So a um, lot of emphasis on not only the team, but the leadership all across the organization. So to recap, leadership engagement, critically important. You can teach the teams everything you want, but if the leaders are not also engaged, um, it will be more of a challenge. Asking the teams and the organization to shift their mindset so that they're open to new ideas. And it does require some ad adaptation of the organizational culture. Um, the Agile Manifesto focuses very much on individuals, interactions, showing working product, um, involving the customers, more collaboration, and being able to more readily respond to change if the scope were to change or the priorities of the organization were to change. All right. So that is the end of my presentation. Um, there is a four-hour class scheduled for May already through the CPSHR consulting site. This was just a teaser to see if we could interest you in learning more and getting into more of the details. And I think I saw some questions come through the chat. So if we go through that. Thank you, Nancy. We'll go ahead and take some time for questions now. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions in the question box in your control panel. Um, first question is from Karen. Um, she asked, what planning do you not uh, do upfront with Agile? Um, so, what do you not do? Uh, the emphasis in Agile is to do some upfront planning so you can think about the big picture, but not to do the detailed planning of the entire project upfront. That's probably the biggest distinction. Um, we have a product backlog and a high level roadmap so you can you know, plan out if there's gonna be phases or, or what the big project looks like. But then we get into the product backlog and sprint backlogs, and we just do our detailed planning on the highest priority work. Because as you get farther and farther along the project, you're going to get smarter. We all know that. Everybody gets smarter as they go. So then if you've already detailed planned something that's you know nine months out, you might end up reworking it anyway. I think that's the biggest distinction is we do do upfront planning, but we don't do the detailed planning unless it's the highest priority work. Can I add to that? This is Karen Black. Yeah, um, I was I was just thinking, um, you know, as far as um, issues that might come up, if you don't get into the details and figure out what those are and work in like buffer time or plans to mitigate that in advance, when you get down the road and you get to that, it might be too late to already deal with those. Like you might have already passed something that you could have mitigated it with, or you might not have enough time left in order to fix it. So how does Agile address that? So this is gonna sound like I'm not giving you a straight answer, but the way Agile and Scrum attack that is by always having us focus on the highest priority on the product backlog, we're going to get to the things that are probably the highest risk or the things we may not know the most about first, right? Because we wanna sort of sort them out. And because we're saying that the things at the bottom of the product backlog may not be that important, uh, it, there's sort of a natural selection or deselection, and some of those things may turn out to never be needed. So it's the process of managing the scope through the product backlog that helps us with that all along the way. But we are also, while the team is working on things, the product owner has a responsibility to be looking forward. And they're still a big part of their role is to look forward with the customers and to anticipate some of those things. So there's there's kind of a dual activity going on as far as looking to the future and staying grounded in the present. Uh, you want me to go? I can see the chat now. So the next question is, how is Scaled Agile different from Scrum? Um, different creators. <laughs> so Scrum is a very simple way to apply an Agile approach. My personal opinion is the scaled agile framework is very complex um, and needs, you would need to have um, 
people experienced in the implementation of that, how you integrate it into your organization to really be successful. So there, there are two different approaches for how you would do a larger scale application, but just very different in their approach, um, just created by two different sets of gurus. <laughs> That's the easiest way to say it. Do you still use a Gantt chart with Agile? No, if at all possible, no. <laughs> so, uh, and that's one of the biggest things that traditional project managers and leaders may have a hard time with because we don't use a Gantt chart for planning. We have um, different reports, different methods. And so the answer is no. Um, best practices or recommendations, budgets are not agile, yes. The state budget cycle, um, very fair question. I have been involved with Department of Healthcare Services. I was on a multi-year systems modernization project where the state decided to run it agile, but they still had to go through the PAL process, the project approval life cycle with CDT. And that was an entertaining challenge. Um, it was really, uh, it took a lot of work between both the state organization I was working with the people and CDT, and they were great. They helped us to figure that out. But the budget cycle is a whole nother animal because you are planning, as we all know, you know, sometimes two years in advance. So that's a whole nother conversation. I don't have an easy answer for that one. I'm sorry, John. Uh, all right. Um, somebody's asking about sharing the PowerPoint. I think, Marissa, you said that we would do that afterwards. Yes, I will post it on the webinar page. Okay. For the reference. Um, Karen, I am saying that Agile and Waterfall are two different approaches. Um, one, I don't say one is better than the other because um, I have lived both for 20 years each. And sometimes the best thing to do is stick with traditional for certain projects. And sometimes an Agile approach is just a really good way to go at it. So um, I am not here to knock anything about traditional project management. It, it's its own wonderful being. All right, I think. Um, oops, <laughs> uh, I keep switching on. Uh, the May course will be uh, really just, it's four hours instead of 30 minutes. And so I have a chance to dive into more detail. I explain the scrum events um, and practices better. So those things that I showed you in the, uh, let's see if I can get back here really quickly. I showed you in this, where is it? Uh, this picture down here, the teal part in the bottom right-hand corner, um, I go into a lot more detail there and explain what those are and, and answer like some of the questions um, that have come up today in greater detail. So it's not so much um, an emphasis on the traditional, but trying to help people who understand the traditional project management learn about what the agile approach is, how you cover some of those same topics and, and do like the risk management that Karen asked about earlier and things like that. All right. All right, looks like we've covered all our questions. Is there anything else you wanted to answer or to cover before we wrap up, Nancy? No, I just see that one. Let me just check, um, make sure I hit the ones that were direct to me. So uh, no, it looks like I got them. So uh, no, I have no other things to say other than please come to the four hour class. You'll get to learn a lot more. And um, I have some activities to do too, even though we're doing it online, I do incorporate some activities so that you have a chance to, um, to learn the concepts in a little bit more detail. All right, thank you everyone. We appreciate you being here. We will post a link to the recording and slide deck on the webinar page of our website. I posted that in the chat um, as soon as it becomes available. So by next week, it should be up. Thank you again right. for joining us and we will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Great, thank you.